decision making and relevant information. Topic two, short term versus the long term. When looking at relevant costs and revenues, cash flows, analysis is often targeted at helping make the output decisions. Examples that we should consider could be, should we expect, accept a special order for our product? That is a special order that doesn't impact other aspects of our production. In what order should we produce and sell goods to maximize profitability? Should a facility be expanded to create additional capacity? Should part of a production process be outsourced to create additional capacity? Using the tools that we have discussed so far this year, we'll be looking at examples of each of these. The first one is special order. Your company produces skateboards in a manufacturing facility. Your facility currently has a capacity of 10,000 skateboards a month, and you regularly produce 9,000 a month. Honey Talk, a famous skateboarder, approaches your company and requests a special order of 2,000 skateboards. His offer is priced to ensure you receive a contribution margin of $14 per skateboard. Typically, though, you earn a contribution margin of $9 per skateboard. Should you accept this special order? Are there any qualitative decisions uh, for your decision? I encourage you to pause this video and give this one a go on your own. This is it's a good intro question for this uh, and ensure that you are considering all of your relevant revenues and costs. I'm not going to switch to the uh, to the Excel just yet for this one. Um, but yeah, give it a pause and come back and see how you did. So here's a way in which that you could look at this with this simple example, uh, looking at contribution margin, whether or not you're going to come out ahead, you can really look at what um, you have capacity for versus what you do not. So what this means, when you had capacity for additional 1,000 skateboards, that means you could have looked at just the contribution margin, just that incremental contribution margin had Pony Talk only wanted 1,000 skateboards. But because Pony wanted 2,000 skateboards, you now have the opportunity cost of those, that difference, the difference between 2,000 and 1,000 skateboards that you can't sell to your regular customers. So first, look at the incremental revenues, 2,000 times $14. Remember, why aren't we including fixed costs? Because this is a special order. It doesn't impact your other production outside of the lost contribution margin for the difference between 2,000 and 1,000. So let's take a look at that. So we get increased revenues of 2,000 times 14, so 28,000, but we also lose the difference between those 2,000 and 1,000. So $9,000, because remember, we're taking the contribution margin they would have earned from the original price, going back, $9 per skateboard. And then um, the difference is the incremental revenues of 28,000 minus the opportunity cost of 9,000 equals a net benefit of the company for 19,000. So based on just this quantitative uh, analysis, should you accept the special order? Yes, because it's positive. That means that it will directly impact the company's um, bottom line. The fixed costs weren't taken into consideration because they're not relevant. They don't vary between the, uh, the two options, uh, the fixed costs or the fixed costs, whether or not you accept the special order or don't. Now, is that where we stop? Is that where our analysis stops? No. We need to consider the qualitative factors. So before making a decision on whether or not to accept a special order, these qualitative considerations might include any impact to existing customer relationships. You'd be removing a thousand skateboards from the hands of regular customers. Uh, this might impact the company's long-term relationships amongst customers, and they may decide to source skateboards elsewhere. As well, uh, the impact to reputation. Pony Talk, a very famous skateboarder, if he and uh, endorses your company's skateboards, this may lead to increased sales from his fans. 
Interesting. So looking at both the pros and the cons, ensuring that whenever possible, this qualitative analysis is balanced, meaning we have items to support going forward, as well as factors against going forward. We don't want to just pile on so with whatever the quantitative analysis is. So say the quantitative analysis, like in this example, was positive. We don't only want to look at the positive factors. We also want to look at the um, at the other side, at any uh, negative items from it. All right, now let's shift focus. This special order, because it was something that was in less than one year, it's considered to be a short-term analysis. When looking at impacts from our greater than one year, uh, we need to think about things like existing facilities production capacity and whether or not that can be expanded. So when we're looking at items like in our last example, because the special order was exclusively within the context of the existing facilities production and was less than a year, that is considered to be short term. If, however, the scenario was changed and the new customer required additional manufacturing capacity, uh, you know, another warehouse, another, you know, production facility, more fixed costs would have to be considered. This would significantly change the analysis as expanding the facility would become relevant and your costs would then be greater than one year, likely, because expanding a facility likely takes more than one year. Let's take a look at a, an example. In fact, it's actually your turn. <laughs> so let's take a look at an example that's a question. You own a company producing rock climbing walls. You are able to produce five standard walls a month with a total production capacity of 10 walls. Each wall has a total variable cost of $1,700 and sells for $3,100. You are approached by a buyer who would like a special order of three walls. They are willing to pay $2,200 a wall. Because they are a little smaller, total variable costs for this wall will be $1,900. What is the incremental benefit, or if it's negative, cost of accepting this special order? Is it A, $4,200, B, $1,400, C, $6,600, or D, $900? Since you can produce these all within the current uh, company's existing capacity, there are no opportunity costs opportune to consider. Okay, so that brings me to another point. Just because you saw something in a immediately uh, preceding example, you cannot just assume that it will be uh, a factor here. Part of senior level accounting um, and really just senior level courses is applying your knowledge. So you're able to produce five standard walls a month with a total production capacity of 10 walls, um, then really, if they want, if you're already producing five, you have a total production capacity of 10, you have an extra capacity of five, um, so an extra order of three walls is absolutely okay. So they want three walls, cool. Um, which is, which is uh, an, which is a factor here to the incremental costs? Well, it's not the existing walls of 1,700 variable costs and 3,100. No, it's the special order. So they are looking for three walls. They're willing to pay $2,200 for that wall. And each of those walls, they're a little bit smaller and they will cost $1,900. So that's sales per wall, and this is variable costs per wall. Each one of them will give you a contribution margin of $300. And then we have, they want to have um, three walls built, so times three walls, and that gives us a total incremental, pardon me, three walls. That gives us a total incremental benefit of $900 or D. D is your correct answer. All right, so uh, I hope 
you are starting to have a little bit of fun with this. And again, I want you to think about how can you make this applicable to your own life? Are there incremental costs and benefits that have come up for you? Is there a time when perhaps you've worked for a nonprofit and they got a bigger, say, t-shirt manufacturer to produce a customized order of your charity t-shirts for a fundraiser for a reduced price? You know, why would that be a win-win, both for your charity as well as the company? Well, perhaps the company had excess capacity. And so all you really needed to do was cover the contribution or it was ensure that they had um, a positive contribution margin here, if only by a dollar because that would create an entire positive um, situation here, positive, positive incremental cash flows, create a win-win because the fixed costs, if within the relevant range, um, are consistent. And if there's extra capacity, then there's no opportunity costs. The second best option is doing nothing, which isn't gonna get them any money either. All right, that's it for this chapter. So this video, this chapter, uh, and I will just mention, you will be seeing this type of analysis throughout the remainder of the course, and you will see a focus on long-term decision-making when we revisit capital budgeting uh, towards the end of term test number two's content. Alrighty, time to practice. Please, I implore you, go to the tutorial page, give the tutorials a go, and see how your next set of MyLab questions go. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next chapter.